Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the bit shoot channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. You know, whenever I criticize the Antifa, I am ultimately at some point called out by people who are either ignorant or intentionally ignoring reality. They always say the same thing. Antifa just means anti-fascist, Bill, they say. So if you disagree with the Antifa, that means that you're a fascist. This is utter nonsense, and again, indicative of either ignorance or willfully ignoring reality. I started to take notice of the Antifa during the 2016 Republican National Convention, because as is the case for most such events, I was listening to first responders on Scanner Radio. Now, Scanner Radio is a really great application, by the way, I can't recommend it enough. It turns your handheld device into the equivalent of a police fire emergency services radio receiver for first responder frequencies worldwide, not just locally or in the U.S. You can find it both in the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store, and they're not paying, by the way. It has a free and a paid version. The free version is quite awesome. The only difficult difference between the, that and the paid version is the ability to record audio. I rarely use that feature, but it is so damn good uh, that I pay the three bucks just to support the developer. In any case, I was listening to first responders, and one afternoon, I began hearing reports of Antifa injecting numbing agents into both citizens and police. The Antifa sent people to the hospital with heart problems because the numbing agent wasn't just confined to the area of the injection. Antifa were actively trying to murder people. Now I'm willing to bet that you didn't know about that because the press, which largely approves of the Antifa and their violence, intentionally didn't report it. The press always refers to the Antifa as peaceful protesters, and nothing could be further from the truth. As the secondary motto of this show says, nothing you see in the press is real. Nothing. And I don't say that lightly. I have made a 30-year hobby of debunking the press, and I have gone through my methods twice on this show. First, in the episode entitled Nothing That You See in the Press is Real, Nothing, and secondly, and most recently in Viewer Challenge, Debunk the Press. It's probably time to do it again, but it is essentially an evergreen show, which means it's something that's always topical, so that if it's a slow week, I can use that topic when there's nothing else really I want to talk about. But in every protest since the 2016 Republican National Convention that I have either heard on Scanner Radio or has been reported by the traditional press, which is almost never, or reported by citizen journalists, which I pay a lot of attention to their uh, live streams, it is clear the Antifa are bloodthirsty, violent, anti-free speech, pro-communist, fascist cowards. The Antifa routinely block traffic and cause traffic jams by blocking streets for which they have no permits. They cause property damage in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. They drag people down the street tied to their cars. They beat people with fists, baseball bats, chains, crowbars, and anything else they can find. They cause everything from bruises to broken bones and even brain injuries, as we recently saw with journalist Andy New, who went to the hospital with a brain hemorrhage. New wasn't the first. Even traditional journalists have been attacked, though they always declined to report it because they approve of the Antifa's actions. The Antifa are explicitly and vociferously anti-free speech, often carrying signs that say so. In fact, the California Antifa home Facebook page has a picture from one of their rallies that's showing in my slideshow from time to time that shows one of their members burning a banner that reads free speech. The Antifa are pro-communists, often carrying communist or socialist flags during their bloody protests. The Antifa always wear black at their rallies in order that they can avoid prosecution for their bloodshed. And because they are nothing less than bloodthirsty, violent, anti-free speech, pro-communist, fascist cowards. There is absolutely no question that the Antifa are not anti-fascists. They are precisely what they claim to fight. Reactionary fascists who will stop at nothing, including bloody violence, to achieve their disgusting ends. 
Unfortunately, police have routinely been instructed in virtually every Antifa event nationwide to essentially stand down and do not directly intervene while the Antifa commit their bloodshed. Oh, there are emergency services available, but only after you've been attacked, which means that you may die and the police must allow it. Yes, you can die at an Antifa rally. And the only reason that someone hasn't already yet is sheer luck. Certainly people could have died at the Republican National Convention. It was pure luck that they didn't. Eventually people will die. And you can be sure that the press will blame the victim just as they've been doing to Andy New. Nothing you see in the press is real. Nothing. The Antifa's bloodshed is part of why the United States Second Amendment exists so that we may protect ourselves from those who would murder us in order to achieve their horrifying and disgusting goals. It's certainly clear that we cannot depend on any protection from our governments. All they're going to do is mop up the blood. I encourage you, research this for yourself, as there is a mountain of evidence. The jury is in. The Antifa are bloodthirsty, violent, anti-free speech, pro-communist, fascist cowards. If you continue to believe that they are anti-fascist, then you are intentionally ignoring objective reality. You are living in a fantasy world. If you continue to support the Antifa, then you are a bloodthirsty, violent, anti-free speech, pro-communist, fascist coward. And that is all that I have to say about that. So, thanks for watching me. I would love to keep this conversation going. So, please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll try and do my best to respond to you. If you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would certainly appreciate your support, either via Subscribestar, my PayPal tip jar, or a place on my web site where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box below. So that's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.